Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to this next part of our tutorial. In this one, we'll see how to animate objects such as images, text and titles. As with the previous tutorial, all files used here will be available through the link in the description below. The transform effect. Kidden Live uses effects to animate various clips such as titles, text, images or even video clips. The transform effect is your go-to tool to animate these things. It can be used to adjust the scale of any element, its position on the screen, and even its dimensions to stretch or shrink it. It also supports keyframes. Let's see how to animate the appearing of a video clip. First, we'll drag a background clip to the timeline. This will be used to have something interesting to look at while our video clip is appearing. Now we'll try to make our video clip appear from the left side of the screen while growing in size before occupying the whole screen. We'll drag our second clip to another track in the timeline. Let's cut it so that it's the same length as our base clip. Now we'll search for the transform effect in the effects pane and drag it to the second clip. Let's select the starting position with the first keyframe by clicking on the keyframe in the effects properties and place our clip outside of the screen by dragging the handle that appears in the middle. This means it will start hidden. Let's also change its scale to 50%. We'll then add a second keyframe a little later down the line with the plus button in the transform effect settings and place the clip in the middle with the position buttons. As of now, our effect is simple. The clip will appear from the left side of the screen and stay at the center of the screen using 50% of the available space. Now let's add a rubber bending effect with which the clip will seem to bounce a little at the end of its movement. To do this, we'll click on our second keyframe and select the smooth acceleration instead of the linear one. And we'll also need to add a third keyframe just a bit after our second one with the exact same properties. Let's preview the effect. Our clip flies from the left, then stops in the middle and bounces back a little bit before settling in place. Now that's the basics for the transform effect. We can obviously combine this with transitions to make our clip seem to fade in or out using dissolved transitions, we can play with the opacity slider and we can combine it with other effects. The blur effect. While not strictly an animation, the blur effect can be used to make things a bit more interesting. If we take our example above, our background video can be a little distracting. If you wanted to make sure that the viewer stays focused on the animation and the foreground, we could add a blur effect to the background clip. Let's browse for blur in the effects panel and drag that effect onto our clip. We can then play with the values to adjust it to where we want it to be. The blur effect supports keyframes as well. Now there are other blur effects such as the box blur which allows you to select different values for horizontal and vertical blur, enabling blurred effects such as this one. The square blur produces comparable results to the generic blur effect but depending on what your background video is, you might prefer one of the other. I would use it for a kind of staccato effect where the blurriness changes rapidly before the clip goes fully visible such as this one. The rotate effect. This effect allows to rotate a clip on its X, Y or even Z axis, which makes it seem like it's moving. Rotate X makes it flip on its side, Rotate Y makes it flip towards or away from the viewer, and Rotate Z makes it turn on itself from its center. The offset values just make your clip move right, left, up or down. Let's take for example a web page we'd like to have scrolling on the screen but with a tilted axis instead of saying boring and flat. We'll drag a background clip since our web page image will not use 100% of the available screen space once it's rotated and drag our web page on another track on top of it. If we want to add a bit of movement, we can make it tilt towards the screen as it scrolls to the bottom. Let's drag the rotate effect. On our first rotate keyframe, we'll leave everything as is to keep the page flat. Then we'll add a second keyframe at the end of the clip with a rotate Z value of 120 to indicate we want the page to turn towards the screen. And I'll add a little bit of X rotation to make it look like the page is turning towards us. Let's preview it. Now, if you want to add some page scrolling, I can combine this with a transform effect. I'll start with normal proportions, then create a keyframe to make it zoom towards the top of the page using the position buttons and a value of 200% zoom. And I'll create one last keyframe at the end of the clip with a 200% zoom value as well, but the position anchored at the bottom. Let's see how it looks. Now remember, to have a smooth effect and avoid the image being cut while it rotates, you need to give it the same width as your video resolution of your project. Here my project is 1920 by 1080 so I have an image which uses 1920 pixels in width, 
with transparency around the actual part I want to see. The PNG format allows for transparency, so I use that one instead of JPEGs, which do not support transparency. The crop effect. This one is mostly useful in combination with other effects. I sometimes use it to make a floating window above a specific background. Let's take our footage of Firefox here. As you can see, it has all the background of my wallpaper, a dock and the top bar of GNOME. Now, I'd like to have that Firefox window being overlaid over a background animation, instead of staying over my regular wallpaper. Let's drag a background video on the lower track, and my footage of Firefox on an upper track. You see that this second clip, the Firefox one, hides everything. What I want is to remove all the space around the Firefox window, so I'll just drag the edge crop effect to that clip. I'll drag the sliders to about the right position, and then adjust using numbers to get an exact crop on the parts above, below, right and left of the video. Now, the Firefox window I'm showing now is a bit too big, so I can add a transform effect on top of that to reduce its size. And now I can see whatever is on the background track of my video. Saving your effects. If you spend time creating an animation with a transform effect, for example, or with a rotate effect, you don't have to recreate it every time you want to use it. You can actually save any effect with its values for reuse in later projects. To do this, just click the little menu icon in the effect itself, on the effects panel, and choose Save Effect. Give it a comprehensible name, so that you can find it again afterwards. Now, every time you want to apply this specific effect, you can just browse the effects panel, click on the little star, and you'll see all your custom effects. Just drag it to the clip you want to apply it to, and you're done. If you plan on keeping these effects even after a reinstall, note that you'll have to back up your home folder, including hidden directories. Generally, these effects are saved in slash home, slash your username, slash dot local, slash share, slash get live, slash effects. But if you're using the flatback version, they might be in dot var, slash app, slash org, dot kd, dot live. Back up those folders and you should be golden. And that's it for some simple effects. Hopefully, you now have a better grasp of how to use different effects to animate titles or images and create professional looking transitions. In the next parts, we'll talk more about color correction and maybe the limited audio editing you can do in Kaden Live. I hope you enjoyed this tour of some of Kaden Live's effect. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. If you really did like the video, I also have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Don't hesitate to check it out to see which perks patrons enjoy. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!